Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Craig Mashaw and I am the electrical instructor. Today we're going to break down voltage drop. How to find it, how to size the wire. We are not held to anything stating in the code book that we have to do it, but it is mentioned in the code book that we should be aware of voltage drop. It's like anything else. If I don't have enough voltage, my equipment is not going to work properly. If I have too much voltage, obviously we know our equipment's definitely not going to work properly. So it's important we understand that we have the proper voltage to the right location. And what does that mean? As a rule of thumb for an electrician, anything over 75 feet, you're going to want to make sure you know exactly what your voltage drop is and what size wire you're going to need in order to do the job properly. There's nothing worse than putting a pipe in the ground that's too small, pulling the wrong size wire, and then having to redo it or go back to a job that you know you should be completed. Understanding, making sure you have the right power to your locations is always key. What does that mean? Well, feeding a swimming pool pump. You know, if it's 150 feet away from the panel, well, we should know what the voltage drop is because we may have to upsize the wire. In fact, we're going to have to upsize the wire. If we have a shed, which is a typical thing, out in somebody's backyard and let's say it's 150 feet away from the panel, I'm just using 150 feet as an example. Let's say, for instance, I want to put a 60 amp panel out there. Well, if I go to the code book, I know I can look at the code book at 3... 10, 15, B16, and it'll tell me, hey, you know what, you can run a number six. Well, that's all fine and dandy, but when you run 150 feet, are you still going to be able to get those 60 amps out to that panel? Will you always put 60 amps on that panel? No, but you always want to make sure you're prepared for it. So let's do a breakdown. I'm going to go through all the different parts of the voltage drop, what all the different letters mean, and we'll go from there. One of the things you're going to need to understand well, is, is this is one of the biggest keys that we need to remember in doing our formula. Okay, So the 2 is going to represent single phase. The K is going to stand for our constant. I, we should know from basic Ohm's law, I equals what? Amps. And L is going to equal length. Now, it's very basic. 2 represents single phase. When it's written together, this is telling us we are going to do 2 times, times, times. Okay? reason I want to start with this is because there's a couple things you need to know. One of the biggest things is the constant. Okay, the constant is going to stand for the type of wire we're going to pull. Now, we have to go over aluminum because you can pull aluminum, but we're going to need to know the difference between aluminum and copper. And there is a difference between the two. So, when we deal with K, copper equals 12.9. And aluminum equals 21.2. Okay, a lot of information, but what we need to remember is this is equal to K. This is equal to the constant. Now, the amps, amps are going to be what we need. The length is going to be from the main, from the breaker that is going to be feeding this location to its end location. So if I have a panel in a main house and I've got to run to another panel in a shed, it's from where I'm going to feed that breaker to feed the shed. We're going to use the shed as an example. I use that quite a bit. So once we understand this part, these are the things we've got to be looking for. We know that 2 stands for single phase. We know that the K stands for the constant for a copper or aluminum wire. And these are the two numbers we're going to use associated with it. 
amps is going to be the amperage we're trying to get receive at that location and the length is how far from breaker to breaker are we going to be going okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to go over what we call voltage drop permitted meaning that we can we're permitted to go three percent of our voltage okay and how do we find that well it's simple voltage drop permitted is supply volts times 3% or 0 0.03. So what does this mean? It's simple. You basically take the voltage you're trying to get out there and you multiply it by 3%. So what do we do? Well, if you do it correctly, you can figure all these voltages out ahead of time. I'm going to write them on the board so you can write them in your code book. Okay, so I have on the board here our volts and I have our voltage drop permitted. Basically, by you putting this in, all you have to do is say, okay, I have a device that's drawn 120 volts. My voltage drop permitted is 3.6. Meaning, when I do the formula and I'm looking and I need the voltage drop permitted, I know I'm going to, multi I'm going to use that 3.6 as that voltage drop permitted. And again, what does that mean? I'm going to show you at the end of this video how to complete these formulas. Okay, so we have an example up on the board and we're going to, we're going to use two different methods as an electrician to find proper wire size. So what we're gonna do is, the first one, we're gonna need circular mills. And where would we find the circular mills of a wire? You're gonna need your code book, and you're gonna open it up to chapter nine, table eight. And you're gonna be looking for area. Okay, we're gonna be using, we're gonna be looking for two formulas. One formula is gonna tell us what our voltage drop is, if we stick with the, the same wire size, and we're going to use the voltage drop permitted, which will tell us what size wire. So if I showed up on a job and let's say the homeowner bought all the wire for me because, you know, their, their nephew is an electrical student and doesn't even know what voltage drop is. And, you know, he went out and bought all this material and this is what it is. Well, me as the electrician, I have to look at it and say, is this the right size wire? Okay. So what I'm going to do is figure out, will this work? So I'm going to take all this information and I'm going to go from there. Okay. So I'm going to show you the first formula. Okay. So now that we looked in the code book, we have, we're going to use a number four. Okay. Which we're going to get 60 amps. So we're going to use number four. And this is our circular mills according to the area. Circular mill will be replaced here. So, we're going to now fill this whole thing in. So now at this point, all we're going to do is fill in our spaces. So we know our circular mills goes here. So this is going to be 41740. We know that this is a single phase service because that's what we're working with. So we're going to put the two in and then we're going to multiply this by the constant, which is copper, which is 12.9 then we're going to multiply this by our amperage which is I which is 60 and then we're going to multiply it by our length which is 145 Okay, so when we calculate this top row, 2 times 12.9 times 60 times 145, we get 224,460. We're going to now take this, divide it by 41740. 5.3 volts fits for a 240 volt panel. So this here, we had talked about putting a panel 140 feet away. If I want to have 60 amps there, the voltage 
of 5.3 will be dropped. That will be my, my, my feeder circuit. I'm okay with a 5.3 voltage drop. So this number four wire at 145 feet is good. Now, let's say we don't have the wire. We need to size the wire. Okay, so now we're gonna find circular mills. So I did something a little bit different for this one. This one here, I told you we're gonna be using 120 volts. So that lets us know that we need to have, we're gonna be using a voltage drop, voltage drop permitted of 3.6. What do we do? Well, we're gonna be looking for circular mills. So we're still gonna do two kill over VD permitted. This is where that chart that I wrote on the board before, this is where you'll find this because you're looking for your voltage drop permitted. That's when you take the 3% of the voltage you're using, which is 3.6. So we're going to do the same thing now. We're going to just pop all of this information in here and we'll be able to calculate it. So we're going to do this. We're going to do 2 times... We're using copper, so we're going to be using 12.9 again. We're going to multiply that by our amps, which is 60. And we're going to multiply it by 145. Let's just kind of keep that over there. Okay. Then we're going to take this, and we're going to divide it by our permitted voltage drop, which is 3.6. Now we're going to calculate this. The best part about doing these types of calculations is this two kill, no matter what you're doing, will always be the same. So if you've already done it once, you don't have to do it again because you already have that number, which is, okay, that's this, all calculated to here. And now we're going to divide it by 3.6, which will give us our circular mills. 62,350. Now we just have to refer back to chapter 9, table 8. We're going to find the area. We're going to follow it all the way down until we find 62,350 or somewhere there in between. And as you can see, in order to make this work, to get this voltage drop to be at 3.6, we need to run a number two. There are multiple ways to find voltage drop, and that's something that you really need to have written down either in your code book or have an uglies book with you. Your uglies book is a great resource. I always tell students, put your uglies book in your tool bag because you know you don't need it in your you don't need it in your in your book bag. You need it on the job. The uglies book is a great reference. So again, my suggestion, get an uglies book. The nice thing is these formulas are right in your uglies book. So if you have your uglies book, you can cross-reference this. If not, Open up your code book to chapter 9, table 8, write the formulas down that I just showed you, and this way here you'll have all that information so you don't have to worry about it when you get out and, out and start working in the field. Hope this video helped. If this video helped, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, do me a favor, subscribe, go ahead and hit the little bell. This way here you can get notifications of new videos. I post videos. On every Friday this way here if you click ring the bell you can be be notified before everybody else that there's a new video out if you have any comments on different ways of, that you do voltage drop or you then you find something a little bit easier do me a favor leave me a comment as always have a great day and be safe